Next month marks a milestone anniversary of a tragedy that changed world history. Uh, on November 22nd of 1963, President John F. Kennedy died by an assassin's bullet while riding in a motorcade through Dallas, Texas. A Sioux Falls man happened to be in Dallas that very same day. Myron Walkendorf says that he was even close enough to hear the fatal shots being fired. As Perry Groton shows you in tonight's Eye on Kelloland, a photo from that day has now surfaced showing Walkendorf in the crowd as Kennedy's limousine passed by. Myron Walkendorf is considered South Dakota's founding father of rock and roll. He and his group, Myron Lee and the Caddies, were part of a national concert tour involving other performers that took them to Texas back in 1963. So we pulled in in Dallas about uh, on the 22nd of November, about, uh, oh God, I'm, I'm going to say 9.30, 10 a.m. after driving all night. After checking into the hotel, Wachendorf learned that President John Kennedy's motorcade would soon be passing by. I got excited. I mean, in those days, how often do you get to see a president of the United States? So Wachendorf and another singer, Brian Hyland, took their place in the crowd to see Kennedy and his wife pass by. I could see the Kennedys coming in that, uh, in that limousine uh, probably a couple blocks as I looked down the street because he had so much hair, we thought, in those days. Afterward, Wachendorf and Highland went to the nearby Neiman Marcus store where he became an ear witness to a national tragedy. So as we were opening the door to go in, we heard what we thought were firecrackers. And by then they were a couple blocks down the street and it made the curve down there. President Kennedy died at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. But Wachendorf would soon learn those firecrackers were the gunshots that targeted the president. We couldn't believe it. All we heard was sirens for the rest of that day and all night long. And of course our concert was uh, canceled. Memories of that tragic day remained fresh in Wachendorf's mind all these years later. And when people bring it up, it's one of those things where they remember exactly where they were when they heard about it. Wachendorf's longtime friend, Cordell Brooks, shares a keen interest in Kennedy's legacy. And I always thought JFK was the president you wanted to look up to, even as a seven-year-old or whatever at the time. Brooks even came across a photo in a book about the JFK assassination that he says shows Wachendorf and Brian Hyland in the crowd as the president's limousine drove by moments before the gunshots rang out. And I knew what Myron looked like in 63. And I looked at that and I thought, I think that's him. Wachendorf is convinced it's him because the photo was taken at the very location he and Highland were standing. And sure enough, amongst all those people, there Brian and I were. Isn't that amazing after all these years? Even though the official Warren Commission concluded that Lee Harvey Oswald was the lone gunman, there's been speculation throughout the decades of a conspiracy. And such talk remains strong even to this day, 60 years later. I think people distrust sometimes what comes out, whether it's the CIA, the FBI. And I don't want to sound like some person that doesn't believe anything, but I think it did change the way people think of their government. You can count Wachendorf among the skeptics. Uh, no, I don't have an idea. It's almost like they're trying to cover up something. Or, uh, I don't know. The coincidental concert schedule that brought Wachendorf to Dallas 60 years ago has left him reflecting upon that fateful day with few satisfying answers. I'll, I'll be thinking about it. That's about all I can do. With I on Kelloland, I'm Perry Groton. Wachendorf says one of his biggest regrets from that day was not bringing his movie camera to film the president. The National Archives released new documents from the assassination investigation earlier this year. We have a link to those documents with this story on Kelloland.com.